is being destroyed. There's no question about this. I don't just mean wars, I mean nature is being killed. This is a really accurate description of what is happening, in the sense that gradually the world is being turned into a human artifact. Not, not to say that nature isn't still powerful in the ecological sense, but it is not, it is not the dominant force anymore. I love nature. I want people to respond to nature. I want to ameliorate its destruction. This work is a alliance, a, a synthesis of the human and the natural. A shadowgram is a direct representation of nature, where nature is in fact imprinting itself in a literal way on the paper, on the surface, and all I am as an artist is the facilitator. The shadowgram is generated by objects placed between a light source and a sheet of photographic paper. The result is a negative, a silhouette or translucent image of the object. It is the simplest form of photography. It is photography without a camera. It was a philosophical process, not a technical process. It wasn't about being novel or unusual. The idea came through a series of challenges I placed for myself, or should I say, intellectual problems that I saw in the representation of nature. I started with the terrestrial environment. I wanted to make shadowgrams of, of the terrestrial environment and explore the visual and emotional process for that. For me the logical next step was to explore the non-static the non-terrestrial environment, the sea. And for two years I cogitated about how to do this. And after doing a few experiments and thinking through the problem, I realized that it was really beyond the power of one person to do it. And it, in order to represent the scale and power of a wave, of the ocean in general, but through a wave, um, one needed something large. In a gallery setting, which is where the work will eventually be, um, I want the viewer to sense the dynamic and powerful nature of the natural world. You don't do that through a small picture. The scale of the object must, must in some sense give a feeling that corresponds to the subject. And um, in a sense I want to bring the ocean into the gallery. So I built a frame. The frame has been constructed to hold 24 square metres of photographic paper. Three synchronised flash units are then fixed at the apex of a 7 metre tripod. Triggering the flash at the moment a wave passes across the frame will imprint the wave's shadow onto the paper. So what stage are we at now? We're at the stage of um, finishing the setup of the tripod, finishing the frame, finishing the putting of the net, and we've just tested the flash and it seems to be okay. Um, we're about to start rolling out the paper under safe lights and sewing the paper in. When the high tide is at its peak, we will prepare to take the frame down to the beach. And then I will flash the flash at some moment, which may be immediately or maybe 10 or 15 seconds later. Everybody ready? Up and towards me. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay, stop now. Okay. Drop it in, please. Drop it in. Pass quickly. Run away. Yeah. 
In the days following, each sheet undergoes a rigorous process of developing, bleaching and toning, carried out in homemade troughs a metre wide. Any photographer who attempts to capture the essence of the natural world must first confront the limitations of the photographic medium itself. The camera selects only a portion of the whole and serves to reduce what was vast in reality. The subject's initial essence is lost. Traditionally when we use cameras and we stick them on big tripods and we, you know, and we, we, we capture, we put this frame around nature and bring it home, we capture this, this moment. It's, um, and then it's presented in such pristine purity and, and sort of this valorized uh, ethereal moment perhaps. Um, well here when you, you, when you look at these immense um, surfaces you just see how nature has you know, resisted its capture, its own capture. It is torn, it is battered, it is bruised, it's this very sensitive, very delicate medium. Um, and I think that's quite remarkable. I mean, I think that's very revisionist in, in the landscape imaging tradition as well. I mean, it's almost an unthinkable act, historically, to, uh, to allow nature to so interfere with the process. A wave represents, is symbolic of nature as a whole. Not just of the sea, but of all of the non-human world. And it made me realise that I was actually dealing with something even more powerful than I had imagined as a metaphor and that taking a picture of a wave was actually taking a picture of the universe in a way that I'd never imagined. <laughs>